wars and rumors of wars. These are the birth pains of global change. They are also definitive elements at the end of this age. As such, we know that wars have been a vehicle to bring climactic shifts to geopolitical powers. And just such a shift was taking place as we continue with the Cyrus Call. By the end of the First World War, 15,000 British soldiers and another 2,000 Anzac soldiers had sacrificed their lives to bring about the end of four centuries of Ottoman Turkish rule over the province of Syria. In doing so, they opened the way for the restoration of the Jewish people to their ancient homeland. Soon after the Balfour Declaration was publicized, the Zionist organization canvassed British church leaders for a reaction. There's a list of about 14 Anglican bishops and three Roman Catholic bishops who responded positively to that, uh, some very enthusiastically. What lover of Holy Scripture and what friend of freedom can help rejoicing at the prospect of the Hebrew people returning to their own land again? God speed them. They have long been divorced from their land. Once more they will become a nation. Bishops were positive about this and they felt that it's partly a solution. It is honoring a debt that Britain owes and that the church owes to the Jewish people. And so if Balfour is making this a political statement, then let's go for it and see how it works out. So there was sympathy from a number of quarters. I suspect there was also skepticism from some quarters, but they didn't respond to the invitation to comment by the Zionist movement. As a good old evangelical, uh, it was great to have 14 bishops endorsing what Balfour was wanting to achieve in, in, in the restoration of the Jews to, the, to their own holy land. Jan Christian Smuts, as a member of Lloyd George's war cabinet, he was very much influential in the formulation and issuing of the Balfour Declaration in 1917. This is what Smuts had to say. Christians who had received the leadership of the Prince of Peace from the Jewish nation were now in a position to make some small return for those priceless blessings and to restore Israel to the ancient glorious homeland. Jan Smuts went on to describe the Balfour Declaration as a debt of honor which must be discharged in full at all costs and in all circumstances. The Balfour Declaration became the centerpiece of our expectation for a Jewish homeland. The Lord had most certainly called England to act as his servant to bring about the opportunity for my people, the Jewish people, who are in fact God's people, to be restored to the land of promise in Israel. There is no doubt but that Great Britain was to serve a sovereign purpose in hearing and pursuing the Cyrus call. Britain has justification, moral, legal, political, to stay in Palestine because they were trustees of, uh, of the League of Nations, trustees of our allies, uh, actually the whole civilized world to implement the policy which undertook. It was on this ramp leading to the citadel of Jerusalem that General Allenby stood and effectively proclaimed British rule over at least the southern part of the land of Israel. It was these same towers that the Romans had left standing some 1,800 years previously to be a testimony to Jewish defeat, banishment and exile. In 1917, Allenby was representing the very empire that had promised to restore those exiled Jewish people to their homeland. And surrounding him were soldiers from Australia and New Zealand, the uttermost ends of the earth, as well as English, Irish, Scottish and Welsh soldiers. Just as significant is that Allenby on that occasion stood opposite and faced Christchurch where British spiritual and political activities first began some 80 years before. The Christchurch Centre, 
had represented all those British and other Christians who for centuries had prayed for and anticipated that great event. It was almost as if these buildings were there to bear witness that the destiny of Britain was actually to be the restorer of Israel, the Cyrus nation in the sovereign purposes of God, in preparation for the return of Israel's King and Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, to reign in Jerusalem. Yet I have set my King upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree, Thou art my Son. Once again, I want to make sure you have every opportunity to see this entire television series so that nothing will be missed from this production done in partnership with the Hatikva Film Trust. They also have other fine films to enhance your knowledge of God's love for the Jewish people and His promise of restoration. If you missed any of the previous programs in this series, they're all available on DVD. Of course, each of the wonderful documentaries produced by our dear friends at the Hatikva Film Trust can also be yours. Please visit our website, www.crosstalk.org, or call the number on your screen. But whatever you do, please stay tuned for the epilogue to this film. If you love Israel, if you love the Jewish people, and if you love the Jewish Messiah, Please stay tuned for the conclusion of this series after a brief message about the Cyrus Call.